Right folks, so I left it gluing overnight. I put the central strip on. Also, quick note, um, as per the instructions, I've just done one strip along the leading edge there and around the trailing edge. It's actually in two pieces. So I've done a nice curve there, stopped to about there and then gone over. Now, can I just say something about this taping? As long as you've got it, uh, sort of uh, about six mil overlap, as per the instructions, um, it doesn't have to look wonderful. Um, look, even mine's slightly out of balance there. Uh, so the, the thing to remember is these are combat models. They're designed to be sort of thrown about and bashed anyway. As long as you've got that amount of covering over the two, you'll get all your structural strength from it. And, and I'm the purist might not be, but I'm more than happy with that finish. And don't forget, we're going to be covering that with a, on top surface, we're going to be covering this with a different tape as well. So um, yeah, let's crack on with the control surfaces. Okay, we need to uh, sort out some parts. These are called the elevons, and these are how we're going to actually control the wild thing. Um, you get two. Um, the thickest part of this elevon goes to the center section of the wing. So if we've got our wing like so, what we're looking at is the center section is going to go there. So the thinnest bit of this elevon goes to the outside. Now, identification purposes, if you notice, they very kindly cut off and sloped the um, leading edge of this surface. The reason being is so that when this actually operates, um, you can get down movement and uh, it's not gonna get jammed. So that's how you identify your left and your right, is the slope that's been very kindly cut by saw head sailplanes. And so there's my right one, there's my left one. Thickest section at the center, the narrow bit on the outside. Now the other two things, a couple of things you're gonna need are these two control horns with their plates, four screws, and also these two little sticks of balsa wood. Um, and in the plans, what they suggest is uh, these are then divided into three. Uh, so cut this into three sections, and then each section is then fed into the flutes. So if you just look on the inside there, so what we're doing is we're looking at gonna feed those into the first three, but I'm just gonna talk you through that now. So that's what you need, four screws, two bits of wood, those horns, and the elevons, we don't need the wings. So literally all you do is you feed those um, three bits of balsa down into the flutes. Look, they go lovely. Uh, there's no need to even glue those. They'll, they'll stick in place. Now, the other tip to remember is the control horns, these are going underneath the control surface. So very easy to get confused. So what you need to do is the, the sloped surface that you've got here, that's the top. So with its slope, the cutaway is the underneath and the horn needs to go underneath. So what I've actually done is, I've just got the horn. Um, they suggest in the instructions that you get as close to this edge as possible, which I've done. You want, if you can, to get the control hole literally over the hinge line. So all I've done is I've offered that up in place. I've got a fairly decent sized pin. Um, you could even use a small screwdriver if you wanted to. And literally all I've done is I've just marked some holes there for either one. And then all I've then done is I've pushed that pin all the way through like so. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna insert the screws. Now, little tip here, just feed the screws through halfway into here first. And what you'll find is that will be a lot easier for you to actually then start to um, feed it through into the wing. So I'm just gonna start, that's just starting to bite like so. So what we've actually got, and you want, don't do one and then the other one, cause it'll be difficult to match up other, otherwise. So all I'm doing is I'm literally just threading these, give it a few turns, so it begins to bite and the head is shown through the other side like so. And then all I'm gonna do is I'm literally just gonna then offer that in place 
like so and it sits in the holes beautifully like so and then all I'm going to do is then screw those in and then get about two thirds of the way through and what you want to do is just make sure that they're just beginning to come through and they're coming, coming beginning to come through you've got the heads just beginning to show through here when they just begin to show through then what you want to be able to do is literally you just put the plate on the other side so I'm just going to give those another bit of a turn you'll notice I'm now not doing it on the bench because uh, this is my dining table if my wife accidentally sees me uh, screwing into this I'll be in trouble um, so literally look I've got those heads just the thread is just beginning to show through all I'm going to do is is literally just put the screw plate on the top like so so they'll fit on there like that um, and then I'm going to tighten this whole kit and caboodle up good idea just do a couple of threads on each one so spin a little bit on spin a little bit on and then what you'll find is now you don't want to overdo these as they quite rightly say in the instructions that's the reason for the wood so literally when you get the plastic looks to be seated down this bit of plastic seems to be seated down Oops. Um, then literally that is enough that's all you have to do there we go there you go that's those two just screwed in and not over screwed it so what you don't want to do is over screw these and crush the bolts wood that's just enough look lovely and firm and that's uh, I'll just get on and do the other one okay so we've put our um, horns on control horns and what we want to do is now we want to obviously attach these to the back of the trailing edge of the wing now what we've got to take into account is we're going to have the fin here so top tip I would just prematurely I've just got a little bit of that uh, carbon weave tape glass weave tape sorry put that on there like that that's just to hold it in place and you'll notice that I've got the wing the trailing edge literally just hanging off the back of the table as in per the instructions I've got myself a piece of um, the, the cross weave tape 25 I and mean, it's half the width of the tape actually so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to lay half of that on the wing and half of it is hanging off now I'm very gently just going to leave that as it is uh, I'm just going to take this end piece off because it doesn't cause grief now so I've got my correct one so thickest bit on the inside thinnest bit on the outside and you want to offer this up so it's and I'm just going to lift the tape up I hope you can see that my hand's not in the way let me move that out of the way so I'm literally going to offer this up like so I'm lifting the tape up and I'm going to offer that up making sure that the, we've got the fin in the right place and I'm going to have myself a tiny little gap cup just a couple of mil but I've got that just literally hanging down and then all I'm going to do is I'm going to allow it's hanging down by about 30 degrees I'm just going to allow the tape just to gently roll that down now like so not going mad I'm just going to let that tack like that there you go now that's I'm just smoothing that over I'm just going to cut this away to go round the uh, hinge sorry the horn now I know that's in the right place that's now coming out that's going round the like so now all I'm now going to do is that I'm just going to gently rub that into place now stage two you fold it right over like so and then our second bit of tape folding it right over our second bit of tape is going to go on there like so like that I'm going to cut 
cut that off at the edge. Now you'll notice at the moment these elevons are a little bit bigger than the fuselage. That's as per the plan and we'll show you what we're going to do. So now I've folded that back. I'm now just going to slow, gently just roll my tape over like so. And then getting a nice flat finish. There you go, one control surface. And, okay, so now uh, we've got our hinges going, lovely, super duper. So we've got to set the gear up. We've already established that we've got the arms and everything in the right way. Uh, what you're looking for in your kit are these two and these two. So what we're looking for, as it shows in the plan, just here, uh, it gives you an orientation of where the servo arm goes and the servo arm is going the furthest way back. So what we'll do is we're just going to, as recommended and approved by the BMFA, what you should always do, always switch your transmitter, make sure your power, any power settings are on zero, uh, switch your transmitter on always first, then you switch the aircraft on, uh, I'm getting a good green signal and I'm just going to make sure that these are centered and when I mean centered is that um, I've got it set up for a flying wing already um, if you're new to this that will be in the instructions with your transmitter but the other thing is important is I've got these servo arms are um, at 90 degrees to the servo so first thing we're going to do is we're going to just switch that off switch that off we're going to unplug those so you want the servo arm is going to be sticking in there like so so I'm just trialing this at the moment going to pop in there like that. Now you want a big enough gap between the two servo arms but you want them to be fairly close to the center because otherwise they're going to rub on the fuse large sides. Now a nice tip here is I reckon if you stick your fin in that is going to give you about enough space. So I'm just going to trial this one as well and it's always better to do the pair of them. You don't want to suddenly find out that you've got one in the wrong place. So they're just in roughly at the moment to give me some idea. I'm just going to you want the, this is called a Z bend. You want the Z bend at the servo end. The other important thing is to make sure that the Z bends are not going to catch. And I'm just going to offer those up there and they're going to be perfect. So I'm just going to set one of these up and then I'm going to show you exactly what it looks like. Okay, so I've got my, um, servos installed now point of interest um, in the instructions <clears throat> they show the servo arm the furthest rearwards heading towards the trailing edge of the wing now i've used two st standard servos but i could not get my arms it would have meant that these uh, metal arms would have been too long so to accommodate the fact that these are nicely finished and got the Z-Bends cut already, I mean I could have um, cut it and, and put new Z-Bends in, but I wanted to use the originals. I've actually turned my servos round, so I've now got the servo arms are forcing, facing forwards. Now, don't panic, because what I did was I just checked on mine. So when I got mine going, I'd actually just um, installed all mine and made sure I'd got enough clearance for the servo arms here. It's all fine. Um, so, um, I've got it switched, uh, switch the transmitter on, power off, switch the transmitter on. I've got the plane switched on, and now I've now got uh, full working controls. What I'm now gonna do is, when I'm happy with that, 
and they suggest that you just run a ruler across there just to make sure that they're all level. But these are level, because remember, once this is all sellotaped in, it's gonna be harder to adjust. So um, I've got these servos just about where I'd like. They're not rubbing on, the, the thing to make sure is that these two arms here are not running on the, uh, or rubbing inside on the fuselage sides. So having established that, and I'm happy, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tape these servos into place. The other little top tip is, um, SAS, what they actually do is they give you a very nice channel to run the cable through. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mark out where that channel is, and I'm just gonna use a little bit of tape, and I'm just gonna hold put those two wires down that channel that I've marked so it will actually fit nicer when the wings come to being fitted to the fuselage. So I'm just going to tidy this up, that's the wings done. <clears throat> Okay, I've got my gear installed, I'm happy. I've uh, had a test run with the fuselage. I've sat the fuselage in place to make sure that nothing's rubbing or catching. It's all fine. Now, final thing for the wings. In my kit um, came this red colored tape. Now, the manufacturers of this particular kit recommend that you only cover the top surface, particularly with this particular aircraft, which is actually smaller than the standard uh, wild thing. So I'm gonna cover the top surface in red. The reason that we're covering this is unfortunately, this is a very strong tape, this um, glass weave tape, but it doesn't like sunlight. So a couple of tips here. Um, when you're not flying your glider, what you really want to try and do is try and keep it somewhere dark. Um, don't leave it somewhere in the back of a car for you know days and days and days. Don't leave it in a conservatory like I did once with one of these models. And literally within about three or four weeks, the very strong sunlight had destroyed this. Yeah, the worst comes to the worst. You can take it all off very gently and then you could recover it, but we don't really don't want to do that. This will last you years if you just keep it out of direct sunlight when you're not flying it. So the covering of the tape is going to be the, exactly the same process as we've done before um, with the uh, glass tape. Uh, I'm going to finish going to the edge. I'm just gonna roll mine over the leading edge and I'm just gonna cover underneath mine by about sort of um, an inch and a half underneath. Um, I'm gonna leave these white and then if you want to, after that, then you can put, you can customize it, you can put uh, different stickers on. But remember that with all of these things, everything you add is weight, and the more weight is gonna spoil the performance in lighter conditions. So uh, I'm gonna quickly show you this um, as a speeded up process, and then we're on to the fuselage. Okay, done the covering at the top. Uh, I've done a quick little bit at the bottom so it makes it easier for me to identify, but I've not done the whole thing. Now, um, the next bit is the fuselage. So what they do suggest is that you trial fit the fuselage first with the, obviously we've got the radio gear installed. Now the key is, is to make sure that these horns, I don't know if you can see those there, are actually running smoothly. If for any reason they're not, now is the time to trim these and get everything set up. So you need to have your radio control equipment working just to make sure that, every, that nothing's binding because obviously at some stage we're gonna be fixing this permanently to the wing. So just a good idea is to make sure that these horns are not catching. So I've literally just, as you can see, I've just trial fitted that on there and make sure it works okay. 
The next thing we're going to do now is exactly the same as the wing. We're going to sand all these uh, nice edges down and then we're going to cover this in the uh, glass weave tape exactly as we've done but we're going longitudinally so we're going to run along this way um, as neat as possible again with the uh, overlap as we've done before. So that's the next step. Um, you don't need a video of me sanding this. I'm just going to gently sand this to just take off the rough edges, sand it to shape and then um, I'll just include a little bit of you, of me, um, just um, putting this covering on.